2005 Chrysler Town & Country Touring 3.8 liter Today we're going to replace the front driver's side window regulator and motor The problem I'm having is it's noisy going down and slow going up. My main concern is this noise when it goes down. I'm not 100% sure if that's the window regulator, motor, or what exactly, so we're going to replace both the regulator and motor, and that should do it. Here's the new window regulator with the motor. Basically the way this works is that motor drives a gear, pulls this cable, this cable runs up and down. The window is connected to one of these sliders on each side. So if there's any damage to the cable, one of these wheels, internal gear of this unit or the teeth on the motor gear, any of those things could cause noise. As you're going to see here in a little bit, the existing or factory unit is held in with plastic rivets, which are kind of a pain to get out. This aftermarket one came with nuts and bolts to replace those rivets. This one came with a little bit of grease here in the track, since this is going to slide up and down, so it's important that that is lightly greased. Since you're going to be dealing with electrical and removing clamps and uh, connectors, they recommend you remove this negative battery cable from the battery. If you're not going to take heed to the recommendation of removing a negative battery cable, you should turn down this light here so that all your dome lights shut down and you don't run the battery down while you've got doors open. This is a 2005 Chrysler Town & Country. Should be very similar for years. A couple on either side of 2005. Similar for some Voyagers. I would think even some Dodge Caravans. Specifically, this is a 2005 Chrysler Town & Country. The first step is to use your fingernail a little bit. Get that up. Get a screwdriver under here. And pry this multi-switch panel out. Just carefully work your way around a little bit and eventually it'll pop out of there. You can see what's holding that in there. There's a couple of guide pins and then four of these spring clips. They're going into holes and slots. On this multi-switch panel there's a connector in the back. There's a red lock here. You need to slide that to the left. Once you slide that to the left, then you'll squeeze right there, wiggle, and pull that off of this multifunction switch. There you can see the lock is all the way to the left. Now I'm going to squeeze and wiggle that off. The next step is to remove two Phillips screws. One in here behind the door open lever, and one down inside here. Got both those screws out. They are the same size. The next step is to pry this door panel loose. You're going to want to get underneath in here with some kind of a prying device. They make some nice plastic ones. Or you can carefully get in there with a screwdriver and get this to come loose down at the bottom. Kind of work your way around. Eventually this thing will swing out at the bottom and eventually it's going to lift up and over that lock. 
Now when you get that panel to come off and over that lock, there's going to be one rod that you're going to need to take loose and one electrical connector for the door lock switch. Just get your fingers under here now, pull out. Okay, I've got it swinging loose, ready to lift up, get this connected through the hole, get it over the lock. There's going to be a rod in here that we're going to have to remove before we can completely lift this out of the way. That electrical connector is pretty tight pulling the wire pretty tight so you don't want to rip it. I'll get you a shot of what this rod looks like in here. You can kind of see how that rod pops in there. You've got to kind of pry this open and that rod will pop out of there. Once you get that white clip to release, this rod will come down and pull out of there. And at that point, you can completely remove this panel and set it off to the side. You can see how this door panel has some alignment pins, some plastic snap pins. You'll want to check those and make sure that none of them are broken. You know, here's one missing. I think I've had this off before. I think these pins are a little hard to find. Here's another pin up here that's bent sideways. We're going to want to straighten that one out. You want to be as careful as possible and try and pry straight out with these pins because in some cases you'll break one of these off. Cheap plastic. And you can see that in that case it stayed with the door instead of coming with the panel. So that one's broke. The good news is there's enough pins on here that basically if you get a couple on the bottom to snap in, you'll be fine. The next step is to remove that speaker. There's four screws and then undo the connector and carefully put that off to the side. Get those four speaker screws out. Then you're going to want to carefully pop this out remove this connector. I've actually put in aftermarket speakers here so these wires are something I've added. But basically you want to go right to this connector and remove it from your speaker. And right here on the end there's a little, little button that you can push in. Push that button in and wiggle it out of there. Once that speaker's out of there, the next step is to work these connectors through the splash guard material. Work that rod through there. Work the lock rod through there. Get this upper part of that barrier peeled down. You can leave the bottom connected, just kind of drape it down here. Try not to tear it. Looks like unless I took it all the way off here at the bottom, there's no way I can get this rod out unless I take this and cut it right here, which I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. That'll give me some freedom to get some things out of the way, get these through there. Could use a utility knife, box cutter. Go ahead and just cut a little slit in here.
get this to come forward, get this lock rod out of the way. Vapor barrier is still connected at the bottom, but it's hanging down out of your way. That should do it for now. Now that you've got the vapor barrier down out of the way, you can see what you're going to have to get to. The regulator is held in with four T30 Torx. There's one down inside one of these holes here I'll show you in a minute. But anyway, there's four Torx holding in that regulator. Here's the motor. It's held in by three of these white plastic clips. And then we're also going to have to run the window up and down so that we can get to the screws or bolts that are holding on the window to the regulator. Okay, what you're going to want to do is temporarily hook this switch back up. If you disconnected your negative battery terminal, you're going to have to put it back on. To be honest, I don't disconnect the negative battery terminal. There's nothing in here that's going to get you with this project. You're going to have to move the window up. Well, turn the key on. Move the window up until you can get to the bolts that are holding that regulator onto the glass. Run that window up until you can get to that screw through the access hole. There she is. Loosen those two screws and that will unhook the window from the regulator. T30 Torx, fairly long extension, you know, three, six inches, something like that. This one closer to the front of the car, you can either get it through that access square there or lower it down far enough, you can just go right in there and get it. You just need to loosen these, don't take them all the way out, give it, you know, like a couple turns out. Just to kind of show you what's in there, this is the new regulator. This one actually has a Phillips instead of a T30. The glass is being squeezed in between those two pieces of rubber there. So you just need to loosen that screw enough that that glass will slide out of there. So in this shot, that piece of cardboard is acting like the glass. So you can see in there now, you can still see the glass being pinched in there. So you just want to get that screw loose. Loose enough, that glass is going to eventually come out of there. Once you've got those two screws holding the glass to the regulator loose, you want to go ahead and raise the window up. Hopefully your motor still works. If not, you're going to have to do some of this manually. Get it all the way up, and now we're going to tape that glass up. You're going to want to use like blue painter's tape or clear packing tape. Don't use duct tape or you're going to have a mess. But go ahead and use quite a bit of tape. You don't want that crashing down on you. Now that you've got that window securely taped up, you can lower the window. The regulator came down. The window stayed up. So it's loose now. There are four bolts holding that regulator in. One here, one inside that hole, one over here inside of a hole, and one down at the bottom. These two bottom ones, I think you can get away with just loosening those, not taking them all the way out. The two on top have to come all the way out. Sorry, I didn't have that moisture barrier peel all the way down. It's not actually that screw there. This is one of the bottom screws holding the regulator in. You can see there's a hole above it, so it just needs to be loosened. It'll come up out of there. Same with this one, loosened and comes up out of there. Once you get the two on top, taken out. It's a bit hard to see this, but actually on the top, it looks like once you get that bottom one to come loose, and out of there, you can probably just drop this down, pop this one through as well, so you don't actually need to take that screw all the way out. 
Yeah, no need to take those two screws all the way out. Once you get them loose, this will come up and both of those will pop through those oversized holes there. You're going to want to take this connector to the motor loose. Just go ahead and squeeze this connector, wiggle it, and it'll pull out of there. Right before you go past the point of no return and pull that regulator out of there, you might want to just set your new part down, do a sanity check, make sure it looks like there's a 90% chance that you got the right part. The next step is to get these three white rivets that are holding in that regulator and motor assembly. You need to get those out. Those can be a real pain. You may be able to pry them out, but uh, some people say reach in the back with some uh, lineman's pliers, side cutter, something like that, and just see if you can cut those rivets. Because the new one's going back in with nuts and bolts. I showed you a couple shots of what those rivets look like in the back. I tried, you know, they kind of have a head on them. Oh, I can't see. They kind of have a little bit of a head on them. So I tried to pry on that. Eh. It just broke those heads right off. I thought about reaching back in there and trying to cut those. That seemed kind of difficult. So I finally just got my little trim removal tool. Just hammer that in there till it goes in, pry, and you'll break it. Comes right out. Snap that rivet right off. All the way in. Pops right off. Now we've got the motor loose from those three rivets. We'll probably have to work on getting those out of the frame so we can get the bolts back through there. Similar story with these three remains of the rivet that are in the door. Just pound something down there, bust their heads off, maybe reach your hand around the back so it doesn't fall down in there and get lost. There it is. We've got the motor loose. We've got the four regulator bolts loose. I took off the multifunction switch, which I had reinstalled to move up and down to get the screws to align. Get that out of the way. Now just lift up on the regulator. Get those bolts to come out of the holes. This one's acting a little funny. So I'm just going to take this bottom bolt out. Uh, feels like it's actually hitting up here on the top of the window. It just won't go up far enough. So in this case, I'm just going to take this one out as well. I'm going to think about this. No sense in watching me wiggle around for an hour. 
It's not coming out of there as easy as I would have hoped. I'm sure it's just a little puzzle, but I'm going to go ahead and cut this wire tie. That's kind of keeping this cable connected to the... Well, I've been wiggling for a while and I finally did get some progress. I got this end to come up out of there. Basically, I had to just get as much slack as I could from the other side and I finally got that corner out. I don't know how come this one's such a problem. I've done these on my Grand Am and they came out a lot easier. But obviously there's a way to get these out of there. You just gotta keep working at it. Work this lock rod over the top of this thing. Got this side to come out. Should give me lots of slack over on this side. Up towards the back of the towards the back of the door. I got this front side to come out. And there it is. So basically I would take this front top, stick that in there first, get it all the way in, then see if you can get this back end in, and then work this top end in last. We'll see how that theory holds up. Get those nuts off of the new regulator. Get ready to put it back in. Okay, so just a bolt and a nut for the back. No lock washers. I've got the old regulator out and I'm kind of looking it over. I don't see any obvious damage to any of the wheels or cables. I noticed that the track that this slides in, it's not very greasy in here. I don't know if that could have been causing the chatter with it going down or whether the problem is a gear in here, a gear on the motor, something like that. For now I'm just hoping whatever I do here with the new assembly solves it. Well let's see how this goes. We'll try my theory. We'll put this in, in first. I'm just gonna say go ahead wiggle around Fight it. One way or another, you'll get it back in there. What seems like it's going to work best <clears throat> is if you don't follow my original advice. This seems to be the side that goes in the hardest. So I was able to basically work this in, even kind of putting this motor somewhat inside the cavity, getting this piece in. Now I'll go back and put the front one in, which seemed to have a little more room. We'll see how that goes. Okay, it looks like I'm finally going to win here. This side's in, top's in over here. It's in! Alright, now just uh, put back on the four bolts that are holding in the regulator. And then we'll put the bolts that hold this uh, motor assembly on. I've got everything in place now. The three bolts holding the motor are just loose. You want to kind of do a little sanity check now. Make sure that these are in there the correct way. You didn't get them turned around. You know basically you should be able to see that screw that's going to tighten down and hold the glass on each side. And then make sure that these cables go through this area without getting twisted. This one came with some of these little white clips that pop in these holes. It's going to pop in that hole there. Move that little white clip up, pop that in. So get everything tight and situated there. And we'll get these four bolts tightened up on the regulator. These bolts holding the motor on have Phillips heads in them, 
but I'm afraid I'm not going to get it tight enough with a Phillips, so I'm going to use a 10 millimeter socket and a ratchet and just get those good and snug. You might have to hold the nut behind with a wrench as well. You wouldn't need to do this, this is just one of my personal pet peeves. I took out this Phillips head bolt that came in here that holds the window on. I replaced it with the Torx that came out of the old unit. So I swapped those out. No need to do that, but you can if you want. We've got the three bolts good and tight holding this motor on. 10 millimeter socket I used to get them good and snug. Got her uh, plugged back in. I've got these four bolts connecting the regulator loosely installed. One, one issue I did come in up here in the front, this wouldn't wouldn't come, uh, wasn't you know getting close to the mating up. And what I figured out is it was behind the glass. So I had to go ahead and take this bottom bolt back off, lower it down, get it in front of the glass, then I could get it where I needed it. Temporarily reattach your window switch here. Just make sure things are halfway working for you. Get this up to where you can see it. You want that spread apart so it'll go over the glass. One of these was kind of stuck together, just the two pieces of rubber kind of stuck together, so I had to kind of pry a little bit, but get those open like that. Then we're going to go up, engage the glass, take the tape off, lower it to where we can get access to that screw, tighten it up. All right, let's go grab the glass. Reach in there and feel like it got on each side of it. If so, remove the tape, lower it down, tighten those two screws. I lowered it back down, I can clearly see that I've grabbed the glass on both sides. Now I'm just going to go ahead and tighten that screw. We've got everything back together. We're going to do a quick check, make sure that noise has gone away. Going up a little slow. We might put a little silicone in the tracks, but coming down. Much quieter, and that's going to quiet down a lot once you get this door panel on. So I think we've got it. Go ahead and take this switch off, get those wires back through there, get this uh, splash shield or moisture barrier put back in place. You might have to put a little more sticky stuff around the edge. I'm going to very carefully use a little Super 77 spray and very lightly just to get it to stick. Get that in place, get the speaker back in, get the door panel to pop in. Get this thing in there first. Get the door panel back on. Don't forget to plug in your connector for the locks. And then uh, snap it in place and we'll be done. Right before you put everything back together, you want to roll the window about halfway down. And make sure that it at least has some play in it, that it's not too tight in the guides. We're also going to take a little silicone spray and put it in those guides. I'll show you that. This car just has one guide in the front. And it's that rail in there and the glass slides inside that rail. If you want to put some lubricant in there you can put some silicone spray lubricant in there. You might be tempted to put some petroleum stuff but don't do it. Use only silicone spray. Go ahead and put that speaker back in.
Seems to work.